you been watching Video Game High School? If you have, congratulations, we like you. If you haven't, click the annotation box on screen right now to go and check it out. Unless you're watching on mobile, of course, in which case you should follow the handy link in the description. Oh, and uh, don't forget to come back here afterwards. Hopefully you all heard me say that before clicking the box, otherwise I'm just talking to myself. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate the VGHS D-Res effect that you see whenever somebody gets shot in the game space. Here's a little bit of history. A few months back, VGHS was deep in post-production, and the D-Res effect was proving particularly time-consuming. At the time, they were using a different compositor, the name of which we won't mention, and Freddy got in touch asking if it could be done more efficiently using hit film. We of course said, sure, and diverted some resources onto the project, creating a custom effect in a couple of days that was designed specifically for VGHS. As official sponsors of the show, we were really excited to be able to put together something custom for them to use. The good news is that Freddy has no problem with us giving the effect out to everybody else as well. So the first thing to do is make sure you're running the latest version of HitFilm Ultimate. Right now there's a beta release out with the D-Res effect in, and that will soon be in the official release version as well. Check the link in the description or on the blog for up-to-date details on how to get hold of it. You can also download a project file and an example shot from VGHS using the link on screen. Okay, once you've extracted the zip, you'll find a HitFilm project file. Load it up and we'll get started. In the D-Res example composite shot, you'll find the completed effect, but we'll be starting from scratch. So right-click the video in the media panel and choose Make Composite Shot. Before we do anything else, I'm going to select the video layer and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D, for reasons which I'll explain in a moment. So I'm going to select the duplicated layer, press F2 and rename it Mask Layer, just for reference. The D-Res plugin can be found in the Effects panel, so do a quick search and then drag it onto the video layer on the timeline, and magically we have a full screen D-Res effect. Let's take a moment and have a look at how the D-Res effect actually works. It's made up of three separate elements, and you can view each of them in isolation using the View menu in the effect. So open up that menu and choose Pixelation. Here you can see a fairly ordinary mosaic effect at work, although there are some extra settings in here which we'll go into shortly. Next up is the Wavy Lines element, which creates a really cool set of displaced lines. Even on its own, this one is pretty funky and has some really interesting uses. Finally, there's the Horizontal Lines, which create a high contrast, lined version of the frame. These three elements combine together to form the result. One thing that's worth noting about the view menu is that HitFilm will render whatever you have selected here. So if you've got a shot which would benefit from the wavy lines, you can render just that part of the effect if you want. Next up, we want to create our mask so that the effect only works on a specific part of the frame. To do this, first select your mask layer, then pick a mask tool up in the viewer. I'll be using the freehand tool so that I can draw a custom shape. I'm just going to draw a really loose shape around this guy. The way this particular effect works, you really don't need to get too precise, though it will depend a little on how you're planning to use it. Then I'm going to go back into the D-Res effect on the top layer by double clicking on it, which displays it up in the control panel. You'll see the mask setting here, which you can then use to select the mask layer. Except, absolutely nothing's changed. The mask is definitely working, I can turn off layer 1 to show just the mask layer, and you can see that the guy is definitely masked, so why isn't it having any effect? This is due to a fundamental way that HitFilm composites its layers. When you link an effect to another layer, it is taking the clean original layer, before any masks or effects are applied to it. This means that in this case the D-Res effect is still seeing the original unmasked layer. To fix this, we need to bake the mask into the layer. There are two ways to do this. First, you could convert the mask layer with its mask into an embedded composite shot. We've got a whole tutorial explaining how embedding works, which you can see by following the link on screen. For this particular effect, there's a smarter way to do it. What I'll do is I'll go to the New Layer menu and add a new grade layer. This I'll then move so it's just above the mask layer. Part of a grade layer's functionality is that it flattens everything underneath it so that any combination of 2D or 3D layers beneath the grade layer will be composited together at the point of the grade layer. In this case, if we now change the mask property in the D-Res effect to link to the grade layer itself, you can see it has an instant effect. The grade layer itself represents a flattened version of the layers beneath it, with all masks and other effects baked in, 
This is a really neat trick to remember for all kinds of shots. Most of the settings in the D-Res effect should be pretty self-explanatory. The best way to figure them out is to switch to the various view modes and just have a play. One property that I will mention is the source frame shift, which selects the frame used for the different elements. If set to zero, it will use the current frame, or you can shift it forwards or backwards in time. This creates a nice glitching feel, as if the playback itself is having problems, which was perfect for the D-Res effect in VGHS. When you have the view set back to result, you get an additional setting for each element where you can adjust the strength of them. So if you want the wavy lines to be more or less visible compared to the horizontal lines and pixelation, go for it. To successfully recreate the D-Res hit, you'll want the effect to flash on and off at specific moments. The easiest way to do this is to keyframe the mask on your mask layer. You just need to turn on keyframing for opacity, then set keyframes so that the mask starts at 0% then on the next frame goes up to 100%. Then move forward a few frames until you want the effect to disappear, add another keyframe at 100%, and then on the next frame drop it back down to zero. You'll probably also need to keyframe the path so that the shape of the mask follows the movement of your actor. To get the exact look from the show, you'll probably want to keyframe some of the settings so that the D-Res appearance changes slightly on each frame. Included with the effect is a D-Res preset which is set up to exactly mirror the look of the show. Okay, hope you all have fun playing with this new bonus effect. Next up, we're going to be taking a closer look at some cool effects made by the community, including this amazing energy ball created by Maya Pictures. I'm Simon Jones, and I will see you next time.